Hi friend, Gal here. Every indie dev dreams with making their own game. But how do you actually build it alone? Without getting lost, overwhelmed, or wasting months building mechanics nobody asked for. In today's video I'm showing you how I'm making my survival horror game Silent Corruption completely alone. And the simple systems I use to stay focused, avoid burnout, and actually make progress. For those who don't know me, I am a solo in the game developer currently working on my dream survival horror game called Silent Corruption. In this channel, I share everything I learned while making my game, all the lessons learned, tips and tools to help you make progress on your own game. Have you ever had an idea for a game but you keep putting it off because you think that is maybe too weird, too niche or too ambitious? So instead you chase safer projects that are maybe smaller or you think is something people may want to play more. And you start this project and halfway through it you lose interest because it's something that deep down you don't really want to do and you keep falling in this cycle of starting a game and then scrapping it. So how do you actually break out of this loop without setting yourself up for failure. I wanted to make a survival horror game for years, but I wanted to make something that blended the psychological dread of Silent Hill with the survival mechanics on th of the long dark, with no holding, no tutorials that is focused on exploration and immersion, trying to survive as a normal person in a somewhat realistic post-apocalyptic scenario. But I kept hesitating because nowadays games are usually like really fast-paced action and I wanted my game to be a slow burn horror and I kept asking to myself is there anybody that actually will want to play something like this? Is there even an audience for this? So instead of just jumping into making my game I started to do some research about this topic. I look on Reddit, social media, uh, YouTube videos, Discord servers and anywhere where horror fans will gather to see what they were doing about other horror games that were successful, the things they complain about, the things they light. I also asked to these people what they like and dislike on horror games. And turns out I wasn't alone. There are people out there that want to play a slow-paced horror game that is focused on exploration and immersion. That's why if you want to make a commercial game, you should start with a game that you would like to play, but then back it up with research to see if your idea is actually something people will want to play. And then you build the core mechanics and features around something that is proven to work, but you are your own unique twist and personality to it. This way, you'll have a project that you're passionate about that is backed up with research to make sure that you're not building a game for an empty room. And while you build a game like this, you're chasing both creative freedom and a real audience. Alright, so you got an idea that you're obsessed with and you've done your research and you can see there's an audience for it, so now what? Most dev will wait until they have the full game before they show it to their audience. And this is a big mistake because you can spend months or even years building a game that people actually won't want to play. Even if you made your research and you think you may have an audience, you never know for sure until you put your game out there. Maybe you build a whole game and you realize that the mechanics that sounded good on paper don't really work on the final game. So how do you avoid wasting months of even years making a game that nobody wants to play? As you may know, a vertical slice is a small chunk of your game that is fully playable. This is also known as a demo usually. It's just one room, one area, or just one basic enemy encounter, and it should show off your core gameplay loop and main systems all working together. It sounds simple, but it isn't. Because the hardest part is not building your ideas is letting go of the ones that doesn't work. Because maybe they sound really good on paper, but once you're actually testing them on game, they're maybe boring or they don't work really well together. That's why right now I'm focusing on doing a vertical slice. In my case, I have some features that I would like to implement that I think may be fun and add to the immersion of the game, like eating, drinking, sleeping, and building your own safe rooms. But since I have properly tested this on game, I still don't know if these are going to be fun mechanics or they're gonna track the game and make it feel clunky and slow. And this is why I want to build a very basic vertical slice. 
and it's messy but functional and I'm not going to focus on polish at all, just the core horror experience. Then I'll test it, see what it breaks and iterate. It's still early days but so far I have created the main character model, the movement mechanics, the camera, inventory, interaction system and I started white box in the first area. And once that I have something that more or less works, I'm going to put it immediately in front of people to get feedback and keep testing and see what other people think about it because maybe for me it's fun, for, but it's not so much for other people. And keep building with this feedback so I can have a consistent and solid core loop and core mechanics while it's still ugly and easy to fix. So before you build a full game, you need to build something small, ugly, but functional. Because this is the fastest way to see if your ideas actually work. And you're probably gonna have to scrap a lot of things, and that's fine, that's how it goes. Quick thing before we continue, if you're enjoying this video, I put together a little free guide to help you work on your game without losing your mind. It's packed with the stuff I wish I knew when I started my game the journey. Things like how to stay consistent, avoid burnout, and actually keep working on your game without feeling overwhelmed. You can get it for free when you join the newsletter, the link's in the description. And while we're here, hit the like and subscribe button because that really helps the channel and helps other indie developers also find these videos. Thank you very much! Solo dev is chaos. There's always a hundred tasks that are screaming for your attention. And if you're not careful, you're going to spend your whole week doing tasks that are not important at all. The problem is, if you waste your time on random tasks, your actual game, the thing that people will play, never moves forward. And that's how projects quietly die. So how do you stay focused when you're working alone and you have nobody to keep you on track? I actually use something called the JAR philosophy to handle my workflow. Imagine your time and energy as a jar. The rocks are your game score system, the stuff that actually makes it playable. Things like character movement, AI, inventory, basically the core mechanics. The things that are absolutely essential for the game to work. The pebbles are secondary systems, important but less critical things. Stuff like enemy variety, environmental storytelling props, secondary puzzles and side rooms, dialogue refinement and subtitle timing, and the sun is your polish and quality of life tasks. Stuff that makes the game feel good but doesn't really impact the core loop or the game playability. The sun should only come after the rocks and the pebbles levels are locked down and are very solid. Things like menu transitions and animations, UI styling and icon consistency, particle effects and post-processing tweaks, or tiny bug fixes that don't really block the game progress. The way I use this is that simple. At the start of each week, I pick my rock first. The single most important thing that I need to do to move the game forward. Right now, since I'm building a vertical slice, I'm focusing on rocks only. I would include some pebbles if they directly impact the core loop. And I'm absolutely not doing any sound related tasks because that stuff can wait. And honestly, this doesn't work just for a week to week plan. It's how I'm approaching the whole game. First, I'm making a rough, ugly demo to make sure the core systems are in place and working. Then, once the bases are solid, I'll move on to adding the rest of the game elements and content. And only after I know that all my game's ideas are working together and it's in a state that I can play the game from beginning to end with no major bugs that is fun and everything works as I intended, then I'll start polishing and adding all that fancy animations and things like that. So if you waste your time on sand and pebbles first, before making sure that your rocks are in place and solid, your game will die because no amount of polishing will save a broken core. If you enjoyed this video, you're going to love this one over here, where I talk about three amazing gameplay tools that I use every day. And they're free! See you there!